Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Okay, in this section we want to move on from our exploratory data analysis through visualization um, and start talking about doing exploratory analysis via transformation. And it's really the next phase of, of our exploratory analysis. So when we've plotted these variables, we, we feel like we have a pretty good sense of what's going on with them. Um, and, and so now we want to get into a little bit more about um, are there things we need to do to that data as we kind of prepare for modeling? So, so the transformation step is really a, a kind of a, a, an intermediate step between visualizing your data and, and kind of making sense of what's happening and kind of preparing for, for modeling. So we'll talk about a few different ways um, that we might transform data. And so what we'll talk about in this video and the next video is handling missing values and outliers. And so um, the, what we want to discuss in this video, video is simply how to identify missing values uh, in, your, in your data set. So let's first of all go ahead and load uh, Tidyverse so that we can get back to our uh, diamonds data set. Uh, and have all of our um, have all of our uh, tidy syntax and ggplot and all of that available available to us. Um, so the the problem with our diamonds data set uh, for for this video's purpose is that there actually aren't any missing values in it. Um, every every value of every variable and every observation is is populated. Um, so we need to create a um, a data set with some missing values. So let's just create diamonds two, and um, we'll call it diamonds. Um, so we're just going to create a copy. Um, and, and then what we want to do, though, is let's just create a missing value. So in, in observation 1.1, one, one, first row of the first column, um, we're going to set it equal to NA. And so we're going to set it to missing. And now whenever we look at diamonds 2, we'll see that uh, on the first observation for caret, we have an NA value, right? So now we've got a missing value. Let's pretend now that we don't know it's there. So how do we identify um, uh, missing values, well, they'll actually come up in summary statistics. So we talked about in our, exp in our previous video on exploratory analysis that one of the first things you might do is look for summary, st uh, calculate summary statistics. And so as we um, take our diamonds2 data set, which will be diamonds2, uh, and then so let's just select caret. Uh, so we can see the results that we want, and then call that summary function that we've seen in the past. You'll notice that um, we get our typical six number summary that we saw in previous videos, the five number summary plus a mean, uh, but we also have a count of NAs here, right? So that, that wasn't there before. Um, but now by, by forcing an NA value in here, we see in the summary automatically, oh, a hey, caret has one observation that has an NA value. Right? And so any of the other work we've done along the lines where we get a tabular output like this, so the summary function or the F table function on discrete variables, any of those will come out uh, with an additional value of NA. And so that's actually how R stores missing values in memory is that um, it really treats it as just an, an additional value uh, for the variable. Right? So caret is a numeric variable. It's, it just says NA is basically another val value that's missing. Um, in categorical, it's the same deal. It's just another, another value of that variable um, that, that's missing. Um, so we can see similar output um, for categorical variables. So we'll get similar output for categorical variables. Let's have a look at that. And so we'll, we'll say, well, diamonds two, let's do the first observation of the second column. We'll set that one equal to NA and have a look at have a look at that now. Diamonds two. Right. Uh, oops. It would help if I actually set it to missing. There we go. All right. Now on cut, we also we have another missing value, right? Another NA value. Uh, and so if we do the same sort of syntax where we want to do this summary function, um, then we'll just select cut there and then do summary and we'll see that we get uh, the same output here for a, a categorical variable as well. We get the counts with an NA. Okay, um, so very, very handy there. Uh, the other thing is that we will also get a ggplot uh, also 
prints a warning for missing values. Okay, so this is another handy way. So we can, we can find missing values um, in the summary statistics. Uh, we can also see them whenever we try to plot. If there are missing values in there, uh, then ggplot will give us a warning because even though it, the, the missing values are stored really as, as an additional level, there's no way to plot them, right? So ggplot recognizes that, hey, there's values of this variable uh, that I can't plot. And so you see we get our, our histogram for caret that we've done in the past, but then um, ggplot gives us this additional uh, warning here that says one row was removed because of non-finite values, non-finite values. It's just a warning indicating that, hey, there's an issue here. Uh, with the data that, that you passed. I can't plot it. So it just removes that variable and then plots everything else, okay? Um, so that really is, is the, your two best ways. Um, and really the point is that by doing the things that we've talked about before, whether calculating these summary statistics or proportion tables uh, or executing ggplot calls against your particular variables, uh, that will tell you when missing values exist. All right, and so as part of your analysis on these variables, those are things you'll want to make note of because as you go to calculate, for example, averages or um, different things like that, you'll want to know where your missing observations uh, happen to be because eventually we'll get to, well, what do we do with those once, once we've found them? Uh, and so we need to know how many are there and uh, what kind of effect will they have and relative to the size of our data set. Do I have too many or is it such a small number that it won't matter and those sorts of things. So, so missing values are really just additional characteristics that, that we, we need to have a read on uh, in, in our data set. We need to know where they are and, uh, and about how many of them they are so that we can make good decisions about handling them. Okay, in this video, we want to continue our talk about data transformation, and we'll talk specifically about how to identify outliers, because they're not quite as stark in, as a missing value in a data set. In other words, for example, ggplot's not going to give you a warning in the console whenever it plots an outlier, because it doesn't realize it's an outlier, like it can you know, easily classify a missing value. Um, so the best way to, to do this is via plots. And so that's why we always start in our exploratory analysis by plotting our data. Uh, it's the easiest way. A picture's worth a thousand words. You can just look at it and see what happens. And I will say, um, I'm going to focus here on this video with continuous variables, outliers and continuous variables. We have seen in other videos about what happens with a categorical variable. Basically, what happens is you get a very underrepresented uh, section. We saw this in one video when we were looking at the MPG data set. The five-cylinder vehicles, there were only, I think, four or five of them in the entire data set out of 234, and everybody else had around 70 or 80 observations. And so that really the, the five cylinders could be considered outliers in, the, in that categorical variable. Um, so that'll come out when you're looking at counts or percentages on the categorical variables. With continuous variables, it's not quite as easy to see. So we'll focus there uh, on methods to, to deal with those in this video. So let's just start by creating a plot. Remember, we have this uh, data set, Diamonds 2, where we put some missing values in. We won't deal with the missing values, but I'm going to use that data set because um, we'll, we'll use it for some transformations later on. Um, so ggplot, Diamonds 2, let's create a histogram. And if you remember from uh, an earlier video, uh, we looked at this table data set. And for some reason, even though we get a lot of data right here in the middle of our plot, it stretches out to the right. Um, and so we kind of hypothesized back then, well, perhaps there's an outlier going on out here. And so we want to we get a, a read on this. Why is this plot so wide uh, when there doesn't appear to the naked eye to be any, any data out here? Uh, and so what we might want to do then is check the numeric summary. Uh, so that, see if that gives us any additional information. So we'll summarize, um, let's just say diamonds to and table. And so we get the, again, the six number summary there. And, and so we see then uh, again that, you know, we go 43, 56, 57, 59 for the third quartile. And then the max, we jump all the way up to 95, right? Which is why we're probably getting this plot up here. So it seems like, 
um, we probably have an outlier uh, around 95. So what we want to do then, since we can't see it in this plot, is go ahead and isolate the histogram uh, on a smaller inter interval. Okay, and so uh, let, let's just say, make a note here, that it looks like there's an outlier um, at the max of 95. All right, so we're, let's just hypothesize that, that that's an outlier. Um, so we want to isolate the histogram and see if we can get a better read on what's, what's uh, going on out here. Uh, and so we'll just redo this uh, ggplot call um, doing our histogram. Uh, but we can, what we can do is add some, some um, text here uh, to limit our axes. And so we'll say the, the x limit, we can just put a boundary on it. Let's say we want to look from 40 to 70, all right? And so we'll, we'll see what's going on uh, in 40 to, to 70, first of all, okay? Um, so looks good here, but it also looks like maybe we have some outliers uh, to the left here, right? Why, why would we get this sort of blank space if, if, there's, if there's nothing, nothing there? Um, we, we could do this same sort of thing uh, again on the other end. Let's just copy that down, and we'll say, well, maybe we want to go 60 up to 100, uh, for example, to, to take a look at the right-hand side. And again, um, you know, we kind of get this. It's still not popping up where we can see any of the data points, so it's Pretty obvious that on both sides of this plot, there's probably some some outliers going on, um, but but we'll have to see. So the next thing we could do is check with a box plot, because uh, the nice thing about a box plot is in the box plot, if there are outliers, it'll it'll print those individual observations as single points uh, clearly on the box plot. Um, but we need to add a, a grouping variable first. because we want to see all the values of table in a single box plot. So for example, if we did a box plot of table against like class, we'd have seven different box plots, one box plot for each class. We don't want to do that, so let's just add a single grouping variable for everybody. Um, so we'll do diamonds2, we'll do uh, mutate, and you'll, if, if it doesn't make sense why we need to do this, it'll make sense in just a second whenever we, whenever we create the, the plot. So let's just create a new variable called all, um, a, a, new, a new variable group that has value all. We'll drop that into the ggplot, and then we'll call uh, boxplot, and our aesthetic will be, uh, we'll put group and table. Okay, group on the x-axis and table on the, on the y. So we see that th this is why we needed this extra grouping variable. There was no single... Uh, single categorical variable in the data set that was the same for all of the all of the observations. So again, if we had done this, if we had done class down here, we'd have all the values of class along the x-axis here, and we'd have seven different box plots going on here. And that, that's not really what we're looking for. We want to see it all together, because we want the, where are the outliers in the table value. And so we see here on the higher end, clearly this value at 95 does appear to be an outlier. Um, so the next lowest value we have is down here under 80, maybe 77 or 78, right? Um, so clearly we get some skew here out to about 80, just under 80, and then we jump all the way up to 95. So clearly there's an outlier at, at 95, right? Um, and then down here, it looks like we have a couple of outliers uh, down here below 45. So we have 50, a couple of observations, it looks like around 50, and then just less than 50, and then down here around maybe 42, 43, 44, something like that, we got a couple of observations. Um, so it looks like, again, a out, clear outlier up here at 95, and then potential outlier, well, these aren't terribly far apart, uh, potential outlier down here below, below 45. Um, so we might, might just make a note of that. Um, let's see, so outlier, clear outlier at 95, apparent outliers, Below, uh, below 45, right? Um, so let's let's redo our histogram with those boundaries in place, right? So let's go back up here and grab our our histogram call that we created. And so let's do it from 45. We'll just set the boundaries from 45 to 80, right? So we'll, we'll go from you know 45 to 80. 
uh, just to kind of box in that histogram. And there we see that we get um, kind of the, the more typical histogram that we'd be used to seeing where we don't have a lot of, of uh, kind of extra blank space, blank white space. Now, clearly there's some skew here, but we don't have, you know, just miles of blank space like we had when this came all the way out to 90 uh, earlier or all the way down to 40 on the left-hand side. So we would expect typically some, some uh, thin tails on a histogram like this, so that's not problematic. We still clearly have a little bit of right skew in this distribution just because that's the way the distribution is, um, but when we're looking for outliers, it doesn't, um, that doesn't really bother us. And then the last thing we can do is actually view the data set to see the outliers. Um, and we've kind of pulled a similar trick before, uh, but if you just look at the data set and then sort it, we'll sort on table. And so clicking once gives us lowest to highest. So we see that we got 43, 44, 49, 49, 50. You know, we hypothesized that 43 and 44 were outliers based on looking at these numerically. You kind of have to make a judgment call if they're not. They, they are clearly separated because uh, we go 49, 50, 51, and then pretty continuously up to about 70. Um, so the fact that there's a gap of five or six here, you know, you'd have to determine if, if you consider those outliers. I don't think I would. Um, they, they, do, um, they do appear to be separate again, but, but they're not so far separate that, that they would seem completely abnormal. Um, however, when we go the other way and we look at the 95, um, you know, it's 16 units down, down to the next closest value at 79. I, to me, that's a clear outlier. Right? Um, there's clearly a jump, uh, and probably in the box plot we saw that more clear than, than anything. There's just a clear separation between where uh, most of the data lives down here from about 45 to 80 and where this value lives up here at 95. So it appears there's, there's a clear outlier there. All right? Um, so we probably would just say uh, a clear outlier at 95. Uh, 43 and 44 are borderline but not egregious, right? They're not just uh, wild outliers where we would say they don't fit the pattern of the data at all, right? So it's a little bit of separation there, but again, they're, they're not just wildly out of line. Um, so, so those are some tips for looking for outliers uh, in a continuous variable, right? So start with your plot, um, particularly if you see a misshapen histogram, uh, that's usually a telltale sign that, that you have an outlier in there, and then switching over to the box plot uh, and or narrowing the window on your histogram can help you isolate uh, that information so that you can find where those outliers are. And then, of course, visually inspecting the data, uh, depending on how practical that is for the size of your data set, um, can be helpful as well. All right, so now we know how to find missing values. Uh, we know how to find outliers in the data set. So we should have a good read on those. Uh, and so in the next video, we'll talk about what do we do with them uh, in terms of a transformation. Do we just leave them? Is there something else we need to do with them to make them usable, perhaps? Uh, wh what should we do? What considerations should we make once we've found these abnormal values, whether they're missing or they're just, they're just actual outliers? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.